Uh, Phil, always a pleasure. Uh, thanks for coming on today. Well, thank you for having me on. So uh, lately, uh, we have been hearing everywhere in the mainstream media uh, that the Russians are back on their heels, that the uh, Ukrainians have uh, seized hundreds of square miles of territory, formerly Ukraine, formerly uh, held by the Russians, uh, that uh, President Putin is embarrassed and humiliated by this, and things are looking good for the Ukrainians. As you know, because we discussed this before we went on air, we're going to play a clip in a few minutes from Admiral John Kirby, who is the uh, spokesperson for the uh, Biden National Security Council in the White House, and he'll basically make that argument. My question to you is, should we believe this? Or is this MI6, CIA, uh, DIA propaganda? Well, uh, it's a little bit of everything. Uh, to create plausible propaganda, you have to have some facts that you can hang your uh, argument on. And that's, I think, precisely what we're seeing here. Uh, nobody knows what the Russian general staff and what Vladimir Putin are intending to do in Ukraine. And everybody is pretending that they know what he's doing. And they know that he's back on his heels, that he's being attacked by his own supporters, and that the uh, Russian army is performing poorly. Now, all of this comes basically, if you look at the sources, from Western sources. The uh, Ukrainian government is being heavily advised by the CIA and by Britain's MI6. Uh, the military, likewise, is getting its intelligence from the Pentagon and from those same sources. And all of the interpretations that they're making about what we are seeing uh, basically are political. Essentially, um, the Ukrainian government wants to look uh, like it's, it's uh, successfully taking an offensive so that it gets more money and gets more we weapons from the United States and the West. And it wants the war to go on. And guess what? The Biden administration and the Pentagon want the war to go on. So we're seeing a, a, a kind of community of interest, which is shaping the stories. And the journalists, of course, are picking up the stories from sources in the government. All right. So so the propaganda obviously does not change what's happening in the battlefield, but it might shake loose some dollars from the U.S. and its NATO uh, partners uh, if they, for some reason, see a glimmer of, uh, of hope. Of course, if you look at the uh, newspapers and the websites today, it's not a glimmer of hope. It's well beyond that. It's mm -hmm. uh, the Ukrainians are going to win, the Russians are fleeing, and everybody knows it. Yeah, that's exactly what we're seeing. And of course, I would take that with not a grain of salt, but a ton of salt. Um, there are some experts are, that are, have basically been skeptical about this narrative right from the beginning. Uh, uh, Colonel McGregor, for example, uh, Larry Johnson, who are basically saying this is a tactical move, that the Russians withdraw from ground that is not essential to what they need to hold, and they're pulling the Ukrainian forces out of their defensive positions into what might be referred to as a trap. So that's another way of looking at it. How about um, uh, the... Uh emotional well-being uh, of the troops themselves. Is it true that the average Russian troops have no interest in this war, wish they weren't there, believe they've been lied to, uh, and the Ukrainian troops have great esprit de corps, uh, they're defending their uh, homeland, they'll risk all to save it. Is that accurate? Well, uh, accurate, no. I mean, uh, there are going to be people on both sides that are, are conscripted or that are regular soldiers who are not happy about being shot at. And it's just a, it's a question of who you talk to, what their personal experience was and what they're going to say uh, about what it all means. But uh, there was a, an article recently. It was a, a, an interview with a sergeant from the, the Russian army who had basically defected and um, uh, yeah, he had a bad experience, and he was telling you about his experience, but he's a sergeant, okay? 
uh, I would, uh, having been a, a American soldier during the Vietnam War, I could say you could have interviewed hundreds of American soldiers who would have had similar views about going to Vietnam and about fighting there. So this is this is normal for a soldier. I mean, you you see something from tunnel vision, and you project it, and uh, you don't want to be there. Does the intelligence community, um, in its analysis of its intelligence for its higher ups, make the argument that we're wasting our money and all you're doing is extending the war, Mr. President? Because this has been going on now for eight months. Or do they still tell him what they think he wants to hear? Well, first of all, they're telling him what he wants to hear. Because before they step in that room and talk to him, they've been told by his advisors and the various psychophants he has around him what he wants to hear. And uh, so that's what they tell him. They're certainly not going to tell him um, this war is a mistake because that's a political decision. They're not going to go there. Let's uh, take a listen to one of those sycophants, uh, Admiral John Kirby, the former admiral in the Navy, who's the chief spokesperson for the National Security Council in the West Wing of the White House. Security assistance packages. I do think you'll see uh, another one here in coming days. Phil, we're uh, in lockstep with the Ukrainians, talking to them every day. Secretary Austin just held another contact group last week with 50 some odd countries. And of course, the Ukrainians were present. Uh, so there's real time discussions going on with the Ukrainians about what their military needs are. And I would also add that many of the systems that we've been providing in just the last few weeks and a uh, couple of months have proven instrumental and effective uh, in the Ukrainians' ability to, to go on the offense. Uh, and to be actually quite effective on the defense uh, in the last uh, several days and, and weeks, to include, of course, those advanced rocket systems that were uh, that we've talked about so much. They're using them, they're using them with great effect. Now that was just forty-five minutes ago. I guess you would say he is drinking the Kool-Aid, <laughs> or drinking something stronger. Uh, no, I all I would say to that is, where is he getting those insights into how effective these weapons are? and how well the Ukrainians are doing in using them. He's getting those insights from the Ukrainians, uh, who have a vested interest, and also from the advisors that they have in place from the US military and intelligence agencies, who also have a vested interest. This is their war. And uh, so I, you know, until I see, until I see someone who was there when these events happened and saw the results and is credible and cannot be challenged in terms of what he sees and what he understands, uh, I'm just not going to listen to any of this stuff. It's, uh, it's all propaganda. It's all an attempt to justify a war which has not been justified ever. I mean, what is the uh, likely long game here. I mean, for those of us who believe that we should not be involved in any foreign wars, I'm not talking about somebody about to attack the United States. I'm talking about something like this, uh, 5,000, 4,000 miles away from the East Coast uh, of the United States, where we're spending billions, where we have troops on the ground, but they're out of uniform so they can plausibly deny that they're fighting forces on the ground, where we have, we're sharing intelligence, where we're giving them billions in equipment, where NATO is doing the same, and where there are catastrophic results to this and to the sanctions we've imposed. Germany's going to have the coldest winter it's had in the modern uh, era. What's the end game here? How does this likely terminate? Well, I would uh, look at the political aspect of it, which is where we have elections coming up in in two months and uh how would it look if joe biden were suddenly to start speaking the truth about what this war is all about and what the possible consequences of it might be if he were to do that on top of the disastrous retreat from afghanistan uh, the republicans would take over 90 percent of congress and and so i think that the administ for the administration they have to talk tough. They have to keep this going for at least those 60 days. 
And, uh, you know, after that, what happens, happens. But there's no way this war is going to end, given the disparity of the two forces that are opposed, uh, with the Ukrainian uh, victory. And, 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 and uh, Biden keeps using, till we win. What does that mean? Uh, I, I hate to try and analyze a human being, but Admiral Kirby is a former one or two star. I'm not certain of his rank. He's obviously familiar with the way all this works. Somebody like him know that he has to put on a show. And again, I don't expect you to be critical of his heart or his brain, but somebody in that position with his military experience, you could even take Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin was a former four star. Somebody like those guys know that they are not speaking the truth. Well, it's, you know, let's go back a ways. I mean, let's look at George Tennant during, uh, in the aftermath of 9-11. Uh, let's look at uh, uh, Colin Powell. He was a four star, wasn't he? And yes. uh, they both went to the United Nations and they knew they were lying. Uh, they knew they didn't have the evidence behind uh, the accusations they were making about Iraq and about Saddam Hussein, but they went and lied anyway. I mean, these people are at, at the bottom politicians and they like their jobs they like their status they like the perks that go with it and uh you know that's why they're there a person with integrity will not be there <laughs> i i'm afraid to say that but I, I i firmly believe that look we've had john bolton lately we've had pompeo lately i mean these people people have no character they have no no integrity I'm sorry to say that, but uh, that's no, no, no. You, you, you don't have to be sorry, and and I don't think you're you're saying it about them personally. You're saying it about this is what they do for a living. At some point, between the uh, agency employees on the ground, CIA, and their senior people in Langley, whoever goes from Langley to the White House, at some point, truth gets distorted. At some point, the grunts know what the truth is. Am I right? Yeah, the grunts always know what the truth is. Uh, the problem in any big bureaucracy, and CIA has 20,000 employees, I believe, or thereabouts, uh, there are a lot of filters as you work your way up through the system. And the filters are there specifically to get rid of the things that they don't want to hear or they don't want to see. This is not like a process at a, at a good university where you're hopefully looking at all the different alternatives and all the different options and, and, and considering them. The, this is a process whereby you are creating policy, which is politics in another form. So I guess there's no hope uh, here. Biden will give up the ghost when it's politically desirable to do so. I can't imagine it would be before this November. It might be before November of, uh, of 24. Who knows? I mean, his political people will make these decisions. Um, they don't really care about Ukraine. They probably care about attempting to weaken President Putin, right? Isn't that the real goal? of the yeah, intelligence Secretary, of the Western intelligence communities to, to weaken Secretary Putin? The defense has said that specifically. The objective of fighting in Ukraine is to weaken Russia. And uh, that message got, got through loud and clear to Putin. And it, it has shaped, you know, subsequent developments. The problem is these people uh, just kind of, you know, speak off the top of their heads and say things that they don't really think about what the consequences might be. And the consequences might be that right now, with all these fine weapons that Mr. Kirby was just talking about, we are actually involved in, in, in the war in a very direct way. Are they actually using the weapons we're sending them, or are they selling them on the black market to God knows who? I would think some of them are, are unusable because they don't know how to use them. Uh, I would think some of them are being sold, yes. And I would think uh, certainly a lot of the economic aid and other stuff that's flowing in is just going into people's pockets. Phil Giraldi, no matter what we talk about, it's always a pleasure. Thank you for your 
honesty, your clarity, and your understanding of this terrible uh, situation. Well, thank and, you very uh, much. I can tell from the numbers of people watching and from all the comments, the uh, Judging Freedom crowd is very grateful as well. Thank you. Judge Napolitano.